Hi everyone, welcome to Shakespeare Walkthrough Macbeth Character Analysis. If you find these videos useful, please like and subscribe. And if you make a donation, you'll get a complete set of the PDFs I use in this series. See the description for details. On the surface, of course, the witches are just a great horror show, and why the hell not? Uh, Shakespeare was a businessman. He knew what people liked. He knew what was fun. Uh, and so he gave them what they wanted. He, he's a very much a Hollywood guy. If he was alive today, he'd probably be working for, you know, one of the... He'd be, he'd be doing great TV drama, probably. Uh, anyway, so it's great Hollywood, Halloween-y fun. Uh, Shakespeare's audience did actually believe in witches, so it would have been something that, that, that would have grabbed their imaginations. Now, much more interestingly, of course, is that the, the witches are not just witches. They're not just these Halloween, you know, cartoon uh, characters. They're personifications of Macbeth's psyche, of temptation, of his corrupt ambitions and desires. So he's walking home and he meets, okay, in, in, this, in this fiction, in this narrative, let's have, him we, let's have him meet three women. Fine. No, he meets himself. He meets his own dark desires. He meets the satanic side of, of, of himself. Uh, double, double, toil and trouble, fire, burn, and cauldron bubble. So that's, that's the, the lovely. And the, the elevated speech to talk about that as well, it's elevated in a sinister way, uh, it, suggesting that it's just as potent as the forces of good, of compassion and nobility and duty. Do you see that that darkness is there, ladies and gentlemen? And it is, it's, you, you're loving the music. The music of their the double double toil and trouble. You're you're loving it, audience. You love it. You're gripped by this this this, this the dark forces of the universe as well. So it does exist, and it is a potent force, and it has to be contended with uh, uh, forthrightly. Uh, so related to the to witches as personifications of, of Macbeth's psyche, I, I would say even more devastatingly, I think they're they're projections of Lady Macbeth herself. Uh, uh, her own manipulative, the manipulative pressure that Macbeth feels from her to be the man. Again, go back and watch the manhood uh, theme video. Uh, the male fear, and more generally, okay, so, so there's a, the, the Oedipal husband, the Oedipal uh, husband uh, Macbeth uh, is, is fearful of the wife. Now, he would never say that. It's subconsciously he fears her in, in that way. He would, never, he would never call his wife a witch. He's too weak to call his wife a witch, and maybe he should have called his wife a witch and said, look, you witch, I'm not going to kill this good King Duncan for you. I know what a man is, and it ain't that. That's what he should have said, but he doesn't. He's afraid of her, do you see? Because he's afraid of his mom. It's, yeah, his mom. Maybe we can add the mom here. It's not just the wife. It's the wife mother, do you see? Uh, and, and extended. Now, again, we can generalize that, I think, to, to, to a, a common male fear, a male fear of the more psychologically astute female power in its negative pathological form. Uh, there, there is such a thing as toxic. If there's a, such a thing as toxic masculinity, there's certainly such a thing as toxic femininity. Of course there is. There's the negative aspect of the woman. And, the, and as we've discussed, it tends to be more verbal and it tends to be more psychologically astute, do you see? And, and that power is something that men instinctively, I suppose, are afraid of. And so we've personified that fear uh, in our myths and our legends, and that has become uh, the witch. Uh, now, that, that can get abused and it can become misogynistic, sure, fair enough. Uh, but it is very real because there are hor horrible women out there in the same way that there are horrible men. Uh, this is cool. I like the idea of the trickster god. Um, just take a quick Google for trickster gods, and you'll see that the, all cultures have trickster gods. The fairies, uh, Puck in A Midsummer Night's Dream, the ancient Greeks and Romans had Hermes and Mercury. They were kind of trickstery gods. They were messengers and flighting to and fro, and they would they were lying. They would lie and cheat and steal. Hermes would steal Apollo, his brother's cattle, for example. So, so uh, in the Christian tradition, they're, they're they're associated with the satanic forces, but they're also pagan. And pagan is the non-Christian uh, religions as well. They're a universal tradition of unfriendly spirits that toy with human lives. Uh, they, they are scapegoats for our own stupidity or bad luck. We used to say, you know, if you're, you know, a thousand years ago, if your cow started giving sour milk, you don't you, you don't have science to explain that it's got a bacteria in its gut and so the, it's 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 ruining the milk you, you say oh the little sprites or the little fairies or puck came in at night and he poisoned my cows. Uh, so the witches are part of that tradition. It's exactly what happens. Uh, the, the, Macbeth is coming home and he sees a, a, a negative trickster god that tempts him in a certain direction, like the fairies would tempt children who were out in the forest too late, do you see? So it's the same kind of thing. It's actually kind of cool, uh, kind of fun. I'm talking about the Hollywoody kind of fun. Uh, so they, they, they are symbolic of the appearance versus reality uh, deception. As I've mentioned before, uh, the, 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 they are satanic. 
and and the servants of satanic forces. And in Twelfth Night, I talk about this quite a bit. Uh, that that the the satan that deception, lies, and self deception are associated with the devil, associated with satanic forces. Uh, they are symptoms of the psychological and social wasteland, instability, uncertainty, and chaos. Do you see? All of that stuff, deception, these are all deceptions, equivocations. They are associated with satanic forces, and of course, those are the witches. It starts off at the very beginning of the play. Acts 1, scene 1, fair is foul and foul is fair. I've turned everything upside down, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing is what it seems to be. You don't know what fair is. You don't know what, you don't know what good is. You don't know what bad is. Hover through the fog. It's, everything is foggy. You are all destabilized, uncertainty, chaos. That's, that's a satanic force, and that's what the witches represent. Uh, they're also very, very smart uh, as equivocators, like they're that feminine power. They're able to use words very cleverly uh, to manipulate. Uh, I, to go back and watch my theme video about uh, equivocation, uh, and you'll see. They know, they're, but they're wise because they know, like Lady Macbeth, they're wise, and they know what Macbeth wants to hear. And again, in my theme video, we see what we want to see. We hear what we want to hear uh, or what we expect to hear. Uh, that That's a big part of, of what makes uh, that the projection and confirmation bias is a big part of what make, make, makes Macbeth vulnerable uh, to the witch's manipulations and to his wife's manipulations. Uh, so Ban Banquo says when they first meet them back in Act 1, Banquo says the earth hath bubbles as the, wa as the water does and these are of them. Where are they vanished? So again, I just point this out because that's, that's the instability. That's the wasteland theme. That's the chaos. That's the uncertainty. That's the uns un instability. That's the equivocation. Is it A? Is it B? Is it C? I have no idea. We don't know. And that kind of chaos psychically uh, uh, can really, really mess us up, okay, as we've seen already. Um, so the, the, to, as proof of their satanic alignment, we can say the witches, the witches, when Macbeth goes to meet the witches in Act 4, uh, the witches say, okay, well, you want to hear some more prophecies? Uh, say, would you rather hear it from our mouths or from our masters? So that suggests that there, are, there is a greater force behind the witches. The witches are minions. The witches are like Puck. Uh, who is in service of Oberon in, in Midsummer Night's Dream. Uh, Hermes is, is a somewhat of a minor god. Apollo is his older brother, and of course Zeus is the god of gods. Uh, fairies, too, are in service of the queen of the fairies, do you see? So the witches are these kinds of uh, minions of greater satanic forces. And the masters themselves might be minions of Satan himself, do you see what I'm saying? And there are several different Satans. There are several different devil figures like Beelzebub and, and Mephistopheles. They're all aspects of, of, uh, of what, we, what our imaginations deem uh, satanic. Uh, so Macbeth says, yeah, let me, see the, let me see your masters. Let me see where, let, let, let's go right back to the Godhead and find out where, uh, where all this evil is coming from because I am in whole hog. And that was Shakespeare Walkthrough Macbeth Character Analysis. I hope you found this useful, and if you did, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to pick up a copy of your PDFs if you need them. Thanks for watching.